Welcome to Wheels, Deals, and Meals, where we talk all things good food, good business, and good cars. And now, here is your host, Arnold Gasita, founder and CEO of Petra Automotive Products. Let's roll. Well, I'll tell you what, we, we have been here in uh, Stewart Beach, Florida, interviewing a lot of people at the Eagles uh, launch of their Always Bikes. And we're doing this at the Elliott Museum, which we've talked about, and you guys have seen a lot of picture, and you're probably going to see a lot of B-roll as we do this interview. But this is the man, the president and the CEO of the Elliott Museum, Rob Steele. Rob, thanks for being with us. Glad to be with you. So glad to have you here today. Appreciate it. I feel yesterday and today, I feel like I needed to wear my Hawaiian shirt. You just relax, beach. You probably should. I mean, we could throw a rock in the Atlantic Ocean where we're right, sitting. Right, right, right behind us. Well, you got some here this way, right? It's so, this way, the lagoon's that way. The lagoon's that way. All right, great, great. So, Rob, how long have you been in this community? I'll celebrate my five-year anniversary on December 2nd, so I hope the board of directors will give me my 10-year pin on this day. <laughs> okay, it's good. Been living in dog years. Uh, that's right. That's good. How did you, why did you decide to live here? What, what made you move to this town? I, I did an internet search when I first moved to Florida because I was ready for a getaway weekend and I, I searched things like quiet, out of the way, secluded, everything else and, and this space turned up. So I said, that, that sounds like a good spot for me. And I came up and it was beyond what I imagined. And you were originally from Michigan? Originally from Michigan. Do you miss the snow? Um, I like to think I do. I like the postcards of a Dickens Christmas with the snow coming down, the street lights and everything. But for the most part, I enjoy seeing the sun. <laughs> right. I think that makes people sometimes a little bit happier. I've had, you know, as, as you know, I've been in the automotive industry and um, I had several meetings with, with OEMs and their marketing teams in Michigan. But for whatever reason, I don't know if they do it just to have fun with me because I'm from Texas. Most of these meetings happen in January. And I experienced the Michigan snow, weather snowed in, flights delayed or canceled. So I think they're just doing it to, to mess with me. But yeah, I think it's nice to visit, you know. It, it, it absolutely is. And there are wonderful people there. It's a, it's a beautiful state and, and hard work. Summertime there's phenomenal. It, it's un unbelievable. Hard to find a prettier place to be. But the, the water temperatures only get up to about 72 in a real hot summer. Right. And here the water temperatures have been 90 degrees most of the summer. So right. like, yeah. Well, I got a friend of mine that says we all end up in Florida at some point. I, well, it sure seems like it. <laughs> they also say the nuts roll downhill, but I think we're in good shape. All right. Listen, um, before we talk about this great museum and what you're doing with it, tell me a little bit about your story. You know, who is Rob? You know, wh where did you start your career? You know, what's your story? Uh, that's, a, that's a loaded question, but I'll be perfectly honest with you. I, I was born in Dayton, Ohio, grew up in Michigan, and... Uh, studied business, and I was a banker for 13 years, and then uh, owned restaurants for about eight years, and then I became heavily involved in the theater and performing arts, so I've, I've run, uh, I guess this would be my fourth venue in my life, up to a 2,200-seat venue. Um, I've booked everybody from Al Yankovic to ZZ Top, uh, over a thousand acts, and directed 30 shows and produced over 100. So I've done, I've done a lot in the entertainment. Okay, so, so when you said loaded question, there's no doubt that was loaded. So first first career move was banker? Yeah. And you did that for how long? 13 years. And you liked it? I, I liked it, but I, I knew when it was time to exit stage okay. left. So you exit stage left and you decided to go buy restaurants. Yeah, that's a... That's a bit of a twist, but you learn something every step of the way. Did you buy eight, or you bought one and then another one, or bought one, sold one? Just bought one and then eventually sold one when I decided to get into the entertainment full-time. But you had eight, you said, right? No, I spent eight years. Oh, eight it. years in the restaurant. Yeah. So how was that? They say that's a tough business. It's a tough business, but the thing I learned in the restaurant business is the people that you have and the people that you work with and how you take care of them is what makes the difference in your life and, and in the business. So... That was an important lesson, and, uh, and I've used that ever since then to just surround myself with really good, great people that are committed to what you're doing. And you know, we, we interview a lot of successful people in this show like yourself, and I'm going to tell you that there's a theme for sure that, that is 
that is different. And, um, you know, you always talk about business. People think, take care of the customer, right? Customer's priority, customer's priority. And obviously they are, but every successful person I have interviewed says this, take care of your employees first. Yep, absolutely. They will take care of your customer and give the customer that experience that you want, but you can't bypass the employees. Your first priority is take care of your employees, absolutely. which is what you just said in the restaurant business. It, it works in the restaurant business. It works in the nonprofit world. Uh, we have 12 or 15 employees and we have over 100 volunteers. We take great care of all of them and everybody's abundantly aware that what we're trying to do is create a a beautiful heart and spirit when you walk in the building and, and you feel it when you get here. And I hope you did too did. When, no, when you not. arrived yesterday. You felt like everybody looked up and smiled and they were happy to see you. And we all do it and we start by doing it to each other because you'll only treat your guests as well as you treat each other. I mean, yeah. that's, that's an important lesson we all learn along the way. And, and once you fall into that and roll with it, then you find out it's a great place to be in those eight hours a day you spend at work or 12 hours or 16 hours you spend <laughs> a day are great hours. So yeah, a big believer, but so are you, it sounds like. No, it is for sure, for sure. It's, it's gotta be that way. Okay, banking, restaurant, learn all this, then you get the entertainment business. How did you, how did you jump from restaurant to entertainment? Uh, Sometimes people start out with something as an avocation and it becomes their vocation. So I was doing things as a volunteer and directing shows and performing in shows and uh, building sets and designing sets and, and all that. And then eventually someone entertained the thought that maybe he should run our local theater. So they invited me to do Michigan. That. And I did. Yeah. Well, to come see Michigan. So you ran you ran that for how long? Uh, four years. Then I went to Williamsport, Pennsylvania and ran a 2,200-seat venue for 10 years. No kidding. And that's where you brought some of these? Late a lot of the big acts, yeah. You have to have a big venue for big acts. Right, right, for sure. Yeah. They, and they want to see it packed. Absolutely. And <laughs> to get back to shore, you've got to sell a lot of tickets. So you did that for how long? 10 years there. What did you 14 years total, so. 14 years in entertainment. And from there is when you came here? Yep. So you left that entertainment business, came here, you didn't have this position yet. You just looked on the internet, I need some privacy, I need uh, tranquil, uh, I need to smell the ocean, see some palm trees. This is the place that brought you here. Absolutely. Your wife thought you were crazy? Did the, I'm sorry? Did your wife think you were crazy? Not, not at all. <laughs> yeah, along for the ride. All right, good, good. So I, thought, I, I was in Houston one time when I got moved to LA, my wife looked at me like, and in LA, I got offered a job in Ohio, and she was like, right. <laughs> but, uh, but she was a trooper as well. Um, all right, so you come here to this beautiful place, beautiful beach. How do you get the job of president and CEO of the LE Museum? Uh, I, I guess you just have to pull the wool over enough people's eyes so that they don't understand. I, I made a good pitch for it. Um, when I came in, the museum had had been in a state of decline for a, a short while and needed to turn around and they were looking for someone to do that and I was up for the and I assume you were meeting with the board that what we were meeting with the board when you were making that pitch met with a couple board members and um, they were looking for someone to do a turnaround and and we turned it around and worked really hard to do that but and did you know about the Elite Museum before you moved here um, I absolutely did not. I, I heard because I think it. that's fair. I think most people don't know about it unless a friend tells them, like like you know Bill told me. Um, but when you get here, and, and look, I don't know what it was before you, but I know what it is with you. Everything you said is true. When we walked in these doors yesterday, the people are loving, the people are caring, the people talk to you. The people, if, you, if they see you by car, they'll tell you the story of the car. If you're walking by the carousel, they'll tell you, pick a number and pick your car. I mean, everybody, there wasn't one staff member that wasn't phenomenal. And the place is unexpected. Yeah. That we, we like to surprise people with a surprise around every corner. Une unexpected things and a little bit of something for everybody, but are you singing now? Because it sounds like music to my ears. You didn't say that you came in and, and you heard all this and felt that. That's that's what we're after. That's what our 
yeah. objective is. Listen, I told you this before we started filming. Bill told me about the place. He's a great fan. You go, wow, it's going to be good. It is better than good. It is absolutely an incredible automobile mobility motion museum with incredibly friendly people on a beautiful beach setting. This is not a small rinky-dinked museum. This is a major player museum with unbelievable cars in here. Like we have great cars, and cars are a big part of our story, but we also have a lot of local history. Uh, we try and divide things up. There's artwork that we rotate all the time because not everybody wants to come and see cars. cars. Yeah, but you know that you have the bicycle and the carriages and absolutely, you know, uh, uh, air as well. I mean, you got a lot of a lot of things in there. I'm obviously a car guy, so I, f I look at the cars and I focus on the cars. But but what a museum! What what is your favorite part of the museum? I, it, it's hard to pick a, a favorite part or favorite thing, but there are some cars that I'm terribly fond of. The, the 1914 Detroit Electric just inside the, the door is fascinating to me because you know, built in 1914, and it had a range of 80 miles then, and that was the same range that the Chevy Volt had in 2014, 100 years later. We have some cars that we drive around in parades and, and take people around show cars, and we have a 1941 Lincoln Continental convertible cabriolet another favorite it's just great to drive or v12 and it's fascinating to me to think that i'm driving something that's more than 80 years old and enjoying the heck out of it and everybody that drives by waves and smiles and makes them feel good so the, the feel good moments that's what our museum's about is just making people feel good we've all been through the ringer over the last few years last few years i mean openly admit that everybody will and we've been separated from each other, and this is a chance to get back together and see other people. I, I absolutely love the fact that you mentioned that the volunteers told you a story, and I'll guarantee you that if, if I asked you a week from now, what was that story they told you? You'd be able to tell me the story. So you can go to a museum, and you might forget this happened in 1936, but you'll remember that story, and you'll tell it to somebody else, and it'll make you feel good. So we're all about making people come together, be with each other, smile, take care of each other, and make those memories last a little bit longer than they're accustomed to. So, so I'm assuming, as I'm going to assume, but I'm sure this community just embraces this museum. Uh, I feel like it's almost like a city hall where everybody kind of meets and hangs around. You're right by the beach. You got volleyball courts. Can we keep you? I mean, <laughs> you're, you're just all over it. You completely get it. Well, I'm, I'm seeing it, right? I'm, yeah. I'm seeing it. I'm living it. You know, what, what are you doing? And my point in that is the community is it. What are you doing to get the people outside the community, people in Texas that they don't even know, to come here? Because it is an incredible museum. It's, we're doing several things, but to get the local community in here, we, we call ourselves the Barn the Community Dances In. So we do dances, we have live entertainment, we have lectures. We invite in the service club, the Rotary Club, then the Kiwanis Club, and uh, all of them. And if they want to have fundraisers here, so, so we fill that role here. We really are uh, a community gathering place, and, and, and that means a lot to us. We're just now trying to break out in a, in a bigger market in Florida and get the day trippers and weekend warriors to come in and, and spend some time here because we're, we're undiscovered still. People that are down here for vacation or uh, seasonal people, they're, they're really starting to enjoy it. But, and we, we upgrade every chance we get and say, okay, last year we did this exhibit. Next year we're going to do a, a King Tut exhibit that opens on January 3rd. And that'll be exciting. And there's sure something new. Every time you try something new, a different exhibit, you draw a different pocket of people. Well, but and it also draws, you know, again, going back to your local crowd, so if they've already been to the museum, but you bring a new exhibit, well, they'll come see that exhibit, maybe. Absolutely. Right? And then, and the crowd you're talking about that maybe wasn't going to come to the normal Elliott Museum exhibit will come see King Tuck, but all of a sudden they find things and they just, and that, that word starts spreading. I think it's a great plan to do the Florida and then start expanding from there. It didn't let you come on a day trip. Absolutely. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm a fan and I would tell everybody about it. It is incredible. And I have people that live in Florida, I have friends that live in Florida. And I'm telling them about it. I really, really have enjoyed being here at this museum and, and what you've done with it. 
and the kindness of people. Well, thank you. It's, it's been amazing. What's in the future? What do you see in the future with the LE Museum? We'll, we'll continue to, uh, to shake things up. We'll continue to upgrade our exhibits. I, I, I like to call it reverse engineering. When we bring in an exhibit, we want to make sure there's a market out there for it. Um, I use the example of an exhibit on dogs or cats. A lot of people own a dog or a cat. So if you have an exhibit on it, that's something of unique interest to them. And, and then you get a, a new pocket of people. And then as they wander around, they, they learn a little bit about the local history and say, that's fascinating too. And then they come back and bring friends and gifts. So we'll con guess we'll continue to do that. Um, we're working on a, a lease extension to the fire hall property next door. The fire hall moved just up the road a little bit, so we have some acreage next door where we can do an expansion to keep more of the, the local history artifacts. And we're talking about built creating a, a new museum space, space that's world class in its adaptability and uh, ability to change up and make the whole thing with troughs and tracks and trusses so we can move equipment around and do holograms and everything else to really be agile and, and quick. So I love it. We're, we're not we're not going to sleep here. We're, we're gonna No, I listen, I, 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 I've met you briefly and I have no doubt they're not gonna go to sleep and on your watch and, and you've done phenomenal. They should be proud of what you've done. So this is some fun stuff. It is. Your favorite car. The car that Rob wants in his garage, not necessarily in the museum, maybe in the museum, but what is the car that Rob wants in his garage? It's, uh, and you may have it. I, I, I don't want to disappoint you or anything, but it's that 41 Lincoln Continental. It's a, it's a green color. The seats, bench seats, are you old enough to remember yes, bench of seats? Course remember. Yeah. No, no bucket seats. You can fit three people in the front. Right, right. right. Have With the eight track tape. Have a girl come right next to you and put your <laughs> arm around her and whole nine yards so that, that's the car it's just there's something about it it's elegant and and beautiful and it makes people smile and it makes me smile so i love it i love it that's that's the one what's your favorite food my favorite food um probably quiche i i, I like eggs I, I used to raise chickens and i kind of miss having chickens i think i'll get some down here when i have the opportunity so yeah yeah all right, good stuff. And then seafood down here, you can't go wrong. You right. fresh seafood all the time. What about, um, of all the places you've ever traveled, what's your favorite? Um, I, I love Germany. Uh, uh, that's a, probably Prague, Czechoslovakia. Yeah. That, that would be high up on the list. And Vienna, Austria, places where there's a lot of arts and culture. Um, those are great spots, but I'm pretty happy where I'm sitting right now. I, I, I don't think we can go wrong in Martin County and here in Stewart. Yeah, well, all of those are great. Rob, thank you for being on the show. It's great. fantastic. Keep doing what you're doing. Appreciate great talking you. to you. I hope you come back and see us soon. I will. You got it. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you for listening to Wheels, Teals, and Meals, your main source for all things good and fun, business, food, and cars. If you like this episode, make sure to rate us and subscribe. If you would like to be a guest on our show, please leave a message at the link below. Till next time, happy eating.